What's going on, Facebook, YouTube? Exciting, exciting times here at the New Canoe Nation. What's up, everybody? Drop in the comments down below where you're watching from. We're going to get your questions answered tonight from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Blake Young. Go down in the comments. Let us know what boat you're floating out of, what you're most excited about from the Unlimited. Smash that share button. Let's get some people in here. Let's get some questions answered tonight. I know you guys are anxious and, uh, you know, everybody deserves answers. So we're going to get them for you. We're going to get them for you. Let's get Blake in here real quick. Mr. Young, how are you tonight? I'm good, Brian. How are you doing? Good, man. I'm stoked. Everybody's uh, amped up about the new boat. This is going to be a fun one. I know you've uh, been doing a ton of media stuff, been getting overrun with questions and stuff. So uh, we're going to get some of those answered here tonight for everybody. And uh, we're going we're gonna to start off, um, though, where did, where did the thought of the Unlimited come from? um how did, how did the whole concept come about how long have you guys been working on this and to take it one step further why add another boat to the new canoe fleet um well we always want to improve that's i think that's what it comes down to um for brian can you hear all right I yeah you're good man a minute ago but now they're not connected so i'm just on the mic but if that's good we'll just keep rolling yeah audio is good my friend okay um so yeah, we're always looking to improve, always looking at what we can do, what we can do better, you know, what we can do next. And the Unlimited really started about two years ago. Um, it was after the Flint, the Flint got out in uh, early 2018 and got, you know, about a year through that and into 2019. And we're really looking at what we could do next, where we could go from there. And, you know, through everything we've done, the Frontier 12 had remained our best selling, you know, model that people just flocked to it was our flagship so we pretty much uh kind of knew we had to do something around that and in the first half of 2019 the concept for the unlimited was really a frontier 12 unlimited that was essentially you know uh, just a, a next generation frontier 12 but we weren't really looking to you know break the mold or do anything different out of that um so at icast 2019 we had some drawings you know renderings of some prototypes and such and we were getting feedback from dealers and, and showing it around and, you know, people like the idea, but uh, we got back from ICAST. We had, uh, we were going um, kind of getting to the finish line on the pivot drive and that got pushed to the back burner for a little bit. You know, then you get into 2020, um, which started out a great year, you know, March, uh, or excuse me, um, January, February, March, then COVID hit and really disrupted everything. Right. So it kind of had a couple months of getting through that uh, transition. 
and then really get refocused on you know new product and at that point you know it, it just started having some new ideas you know hearing from our team um from dealers and just kind of saying hey what can we do that would be different instead of just trying to redo the frontier 12 how could we do something that's similar but different so i mean I, I know this is a big question and, and and a lot of folks if i've seen a lot of folks ask it is the unlimited going to replace the frontier 12 was that something you guys thought about is that something that's going to happen um maybe your thoughts on that um from our perspective no the unlimited complements the frontier 12 the frontier 12 complements the unlimited but they're separate products and you know we intend for them both to have a bright future um ultimately you know what people want is what decides so we're going to do sure. our best to continue making the frontier you know better and better and making the unlimited better and better and i fully believe our dealers fully believe that there's going to be a market for both of them with the uh you know from our kind of internal perspective with the unlimited you know there's definitely some overlap on the frontier 12 and we know some frontier 12 owners are going to love the unlimited and definitely want to make that jump there's going to be some pursuit owners that may love the unlimited make them want that jump but we see the bigger opportunity as being people that currently aren't in a new canoe those that you know are in a different fishing kayak or maybe not a fishing kayak at all and see what the unlimited has to offer and just go wow that's yeah. a better solution for me that's that's what i've been looking for we really saw that kind of same pattern um, years ago when we had the classic 12 back in two, you know, 2006 to 2011, our entire business was what we now call the classic 10 and 12. And sure. When we designed the classic, uh, excuse me, the frontier 12, you know, it was an evolution of the classic 12. And we had people that were classic owners that jumped into the frontier 12 for sure. But what we really saw was people who had seen the classic 12 and said, you know, it's, I like that. There's something about that that makes sense to me, but it's just not quite right. When we brought up the Frontier 12, boom, that was it. And I think we'll see a lot of the same thing with the Unlimited, where people who had kind of looked at New Canoe and go, man, they're really onto something there, you know, but eh, maybe not quite ready for me yet. They see that Unlimited and, um, you know, boom, that's it. That's That's what I've been waiting for. So that's what we're really excited about and kind of the reaction to the to the big launch has reinforced that to some extent. And, um, you know, I think we will have a lot of people that haven't been, you know, in the new canoe family, you know, making the jump into new canoe with the unlimited. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, I'm seeing a couple, couple comments here in the chat, Chuck, uh, tongue tied. I'm just so excited tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Russell said, this will be his first new canoe. Congrats. Awesome. Welcome to, welcome to the family brother. Um, I know the, a, a lot of people are asking, um, what's the price point of the unlimited? Uh, the unlimited is fifteen ninety nine. So for us, you know, the pursuits fifteen ninety nine. The frontier twelve is fourteen ninety nine. So it's right there at the kind of the top end. But we're not, you know, raising the price level with the unlimited. I like it. I like and, it. Um, if I can jump back a little bit, Brian, to your prior question about the design, you know, we talked about yeah. how it kind of started with uh, being a Frontier 12 style design. You know, some of the things that really shifted it away from that, um, you know, Everett Park, our pro staff director. Um, Who's that? He wrote, Everett who? <laughs> if you've heard of him. Uh, I don't know that guy. <laughs> you don't know him by now with all the, all the videos he's had up this week, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so Everett really kind of said, hey, you know, with the Flint, we got this uh, concept of having the storage detached from the actual kayak itself, which gives you a lot more, you know, really functionality and performance to have modular on-demand storage instead of having the gear vault built in. Because if you want that open space, you have it. But if you want storage, you have it. And you take out the number one source of, you know, water intrusion and leaks in kayaks, which is a big hatch. So by taking that, the, 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 what, what we call the gear vault out and launching the gear pod to provide that storage, that really kind of changed the complexion of the Unlimited. Um, we also had, um, I think it was Ramel on our team that really kind of pushed for the idea of a, a 12 foot, um, just adding six inches to get a little bit more paddling speed, a little more performance out of it. Um, 
we had a number of guys that really pounded the table for the top load aluminum tracks saying, hey, if we're going to do something new, we got to do the top load aluminum tracks. So sure. really, and you've kind of heard me mention a couple names and stuff. We had a really just influential group within our team, uh, just call it a skunk works. And we had about 15 guys that we'd get together with on Zoom and through a private Facebook group and share rendering, share where we were at, talk it through and, you know, really get a diverse um you know, input from from our team, guys that use motors, that paddle, that use pivot drives, that, you know, would do it, would use outboards, would be going tandem, fly fishing, tournament fishing, you know, you name it across the spectrum. We had input, could take all that and try to put it into a form that really would, uh, you know, serve a lot of people really well and really allow them to unlimit themselves. Well, and that's one thing too. Um, I forget where, where this was touched on. Um, but, you know, you mentioned that you, you had a lot of team members uh, input on on the actual boat. But what some of you guys may not know, um, you know, whether you're just a new canoe owner, a uh, new canoe fan, um, what have you, you know, these team guys, they report back to essentially you and um, their region manager once a month. And one thing that I I've always um, admired is you guys ask, Hey, what do you think we could improve on? What, what do you think we could do different and things like that? And you guys actually listen to that. I mean, I see a lot of things in the unlimited that um, is talked about amongst a lot of new canoe fans that you guys have really put a ton of thought and integration into this boat. And it, it, the unveiling revealed all that and you know kudos to you guys uh for doing that because i mean it's it's super cool um to to be able to have that input and actually see what it transforms into yeah it's it's something that goes back really to the start of our our company our business that we you know we really started on the ground floor you know we didn't we weren't hatched out of some bigger business or anything like that. So it was a lot of just kind of boots on the ground, you know, working day by day to get this thing off the ground, get it going. And because of that, we had a real direct connection to our customers and dealers. So sure. if somebody had a comment, we would hear it. If they sent an email, it would get read. If dealers, you know, had input, we'd hear it. If owners had a problem, we'd hear it. So we weren't insulated from what was happening out there. And it's really just been great feedback for us. It's really helped us immensely over the you know, past 15 years. And I think, like you said, you really see that reflected in, in the new products that we do, that it addresses the, you know, the concerns, the, 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 the demands, if you will, of the, of the yeah. community that says, this is what we want. Sure. And really love to build that into a product and then deliver it and see it all come together. And it's just really exciting. Absolutely, man. I know I was doing a little dance as you were un <laughs> unveiling it, you know, and uh, I know there was a lot of people out there, too, that were just kind of kind of blown back by it. Um, and and again, man, it's just super cool. To, it's always super cool to see um, something new, you know, come come out from whatever favorite company it is, whether it's new canoe or um, you know, favorite rod company, whatever it may be, you know, it's just, uh, it's cool to see, you know, new cool things come out and, uh, be excited about them, you know? Definitely. I mean, it's to see those ideas become reality and see the, you know, that finished product, 12 foot five in length and 41 inches wide sitting there on the factory floor instead of in a computer screen rendering. It's just kind of yeah. like, wow, it's for real. Well, I'm sure. I mean, after all the work you guys put in and then it finally comes to fruition, you know, and you actually see it come out of the mold for the first time, man. I mean, what's that feeling like? Oh, right. You got God. two years of work and then you finally get to see it come out of the actual mold. Um, well, that's got to be what, something in itself. Yeah, it was quite the, quite the roller coaster. Um, <laughs> so a little backstory. We were supposed to get the mold in on February 8th, like a week, you know, two weeks ago today. But because of a COVID contract tracing issue at the mold maker, they had limited personnel. It was pushed back a week. So instead of kind of having that first week to get everything dialed in and really prepped and just kind of do it on a real, you know, methodical timeline. Well, we get the mold on the 15th 
and I'm getting up there the 16th and we're hoping to launch this thing on the 18th. And that's, you know, pretty compressed from first part out of the mold to, you know, being confident enough to introduce it to the public and say, we got this thing coming. Sure. So I get up there on, uh, on Tuesday afternoon, you know, late afternoon. And I, you know, got word on the way up that, yeah, we got a part, uh, the first parts coming out of the oven soon. So I get up there and I'm all excited, you know, I'm going to test everything out, see how it looks. And it's, it's a natural color. So it's just white because the first part always comes out dirty and just not clean and stuff. But sure, sure, sure man, sure. it was just, uh, it, it, it was too long. The tracks didn't fit. The handle receiver didn't fit. There was blow holes throughout the whole thing. And it, it was, it was pretty discouraging. <laughs> it was the first time I'd seen a first part, man. I don't know. I might have just turned around and left. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> talked to their engineer and he said, well, had a little setback. The, uh, the mold maker forgot to vent the mold. So instead of the air pressure as it heats up, like having a place to go, it was just kind of like blowing out everywhere. Oh, and okay. Then, uh, he also said, um, yeah, it cooled completely in the mold, so it didn't have the ability to shrink like it normally would. Huh. So after hearing that, then I'm kind of like calmed down and felt, okay, yeah, well, let's just give this a day. And I called Brian, who was um, my point man out there for the launch with all the marketing stuff, and he was at the airport. And I said, man, I might have to call you and tell you to turn around and go home. <laughs> Things don't turn out well. So I called him, and he had just gone through security. <laughs> he sees me calling. He's like, oh, crap. <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> and I said, well, Brian, I don't know what we're going to be doing this week, but you come on out here and we'll make the most of it. <laughs> you come out and freeze in Wisconsin, you know? It's, yeah, I know. Come well, there's nice. It's sunny. it's sunny out here and five degrees. You'll enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> so we, uh, we talked it over. We got the mold maker up that afternoon. He put the vents in. We hatched a plan. We've got great partners there at our factory that do a really nice job. And you know, the, the, this, the evening shift, he was going to run uh, one more natural part, you know, with no inserts, just kind of let the cycle run, do another one with the inserts, and then a third part, you know, a thunderstorm. Um, nice. Limited. And so I I was thinking, oh, I'm going to come back and check on it. But, uh, you know, I'll come back in the morning. You just run those parts. We'll see what we get in the morning. So I got back there about 6.30, and there's a thunderstorm unlimited sitting on the floor looking great. <laughs> Put everything in, and it fit. That, that felt good. That felt real yeah, good. I bet, so, man. And then, I you bet. know, seeing the finished product as it actually looks for the first time was, uh, I was like, wow, that, that, that looks good. And just seeing everything come together, all the fit and finish, you know, it's, uh, you can design everything and, you know, you get it pretty precise, but there's always a the little variables and, you know, in the in the molding and the cooling and the shape and everything. So putting all those parts in there and installing them in the right place and just seeing how the the new things we've done, like the knockout plate for the deck um, for the deck plate in the back, instead of having to cut that out, it should bam hit it with a mallet and it pops right out. And That's using slick. A, a hole saw with a molded in kind of guide for the flush rod holders. So really, a lot of uh, a lot of the real some of the key thought and and uh, work that went into this won't ever really be seen sure you know by the end user but they'll enjoy it because everything is going to work right every time you're not going to get water inside that hole it's going to look good everything's just you know going to be dialed in so that's awesome yeah yeah it was, i it was love fun. it man i love it well real quick i got i got the boat pulled up specs i i seen a couple spec questions boats 12 foot 6 41 inches wide rough weight 80 pounds Eight, 84 pounds is what we're Eight. our final weight is so it's, okay 84 pounds is your final weight um that's with the seat in it without the seat without the seat all right so fusion seat adds a few more pounds or if you're going with a bench seat some guys are going with coolers now. I mean, it, whatever it floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, um, paddle, pivot drive, bow mount, torpedo, outboard, EPS system, um, all that good stuff. We got the built-in transducer uh, mount on the bottom. Or it's you guys have a retractable transducer mount coming. But there is space uh, molded in the bottom of the boat for a transducer. 
you guys made it nice and big. So side scan transducers, things like that are going to fit in there real nice. Um, I know uh, one big question, when's the ship date and what's the best way to order? Uh, we will start shipping. We're, we're ramping up production this week. Um, you know, just kind of taking it a little bit slow to make sure you get everything real dialed in and, and, and just right. Um, so we'll be ramping up this week and then kind of hopefully hitting close to full speed by the end of next week. Dealer shipments will start going out uh, next week. Um, okay. We have a couple. The, this week we're getting a few boats out to, to team members that are going to be creating some more content and just putting it through the paces. Um, we've also got a couple going to the dealers that have shows events just so they can be able to show it off. But main shipments will start in March and, you know, with our, our March preseason orders, that was the first kind of ship date for dealers to put in a limited orders. We have about seven, eight weeks of orders on the books. So it Very will cool. be, you know, it'll, it'll be into mid, mid April for all these orders to get out. So the best thing you can do is contact your local dealer. Most dealers do have unlimiteds on order and, you know, just get in touch with them, tell them what you want. We're working with dealers the best we can to, you know, kind of tweak colors to match what people want. And, you know, if they had more frontier 12s on the order and need to switch to some unlimiteds, we're, we're trying to accommodate. So we're, we're working with the dealers to take care of customers. So get with your dealer. Let them know what you want, and we'll do our best working with them to make it happen as soon as possible. Very cool. Color options, and I know we only have a few color options, so the second part of that question is why aren't some of the other colors available in the Unlimited? Like like what color? Um, see, now you're throwing me through a loop. Man. <laughs> now, I look, now I look bad in front of the boss, guys. Thanks oh, a lot. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I think I think Army Camo isn't one of them. Correct, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Well, um, you know, I know Brian, I've seen that one quite a bit. We've uh, we've been talking about that, and we see a lot of questions for Army Camo, and there's a reason why we didn't inter you know have Army Camo as a standard color. And I can't quite get into that yet because that's something for a little bit down the road. But oh, all right. We all also right. we don't want people to want the unlimited and not be able to get the color they want. So, you know, like you said, we listen to our customers. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to make the unlimited available in army camo. You hear it. You heard it here first. <laughs> Look at that. I'm getting you guys so, the juice. Um, don't go blow up your dealers quite yet. Cause I <laughs> didn't get around to kind of letting them know today, but we're going to add that as a standard color option. So if army camo is what you want, army camo is what you can get. Um, and then, you know, the, the other things will still be coming down the road, but we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to put you off quite yet on that. So chat's blowing up with, yes, <laughs> you just did it, man. You just did it. Yeah. Troy so, uh, Fountain Road trading post up in uh, Vermont. He was pounding the table hard for army camo a few weeks ago. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that was the main color, um, that everybody was, was kind of asking about, you know, like how come it's, uh, you know, no, no camo. Um, yeah. So. so in addition to, you know, what we have coming down the road, you know, the thinking was, Hey, let's, this kind of fits the, the mold, not so much the width, but kind of the open deck platform of the Flint and pursuit. And that's the color scheme those are in. So that's kind of why we opted for the Tundra over the army camo, um, you know, in the first place. But like I said, we did have a plan for, for that, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and open it up to Army Camo now. So I, I know some people have commented and messaged and saying, "Hey, I want Army Camo, but I ordered in Tundra just because I don't want to wait. And I want to get it, and we'd much rather have everybody have the color they really want than just uh, you know either have to wait or not be able to get it." Well, uh, Yacking Vet says that's what was holding me back from buying one. Army <laughs> Camo is a selling point, so. Yakking Vet just placed his order for a nice unlimited and army camo. <laughs> I like it. Congrats That's on the awesome. new boat, my friend. Um, so the big, what's the big comparison and uh, uh, differences between the unlimited and the Frontier Twelve? Besides, you know, the width is virtually the same. The, the length is a little bit longer on the unlimited, and that's been a big hot question for folks too. Like. 
what is the key differences between the two? Um, I have some ideas. I've heard some thoughts on this, but I wanted to get it from you. Sure. Um, the unlimited uh, adds that extra six inches, so it's definitely a, a faster paddling kayak and just more efficient hole than the uh, than the Frontier Twelve. Um, I was pretty blown away watching that video with with Craig Dye and, and Everett with that bow mount motor. Just how little turbulence and movement there was on the water is that uh, you know motor guide is pulling that unlimited you know through that lake. So it's a really efficient hole. And it's uh, it's definitely a faster paddling speed. You know, if you're familiar with a couple of our models, it kind of fits between the Pursuit and the Frontier 12 in terms of speed and stability. So it's definitely faster than the Frontier 12. Just about as stable, but probably not quite as much. Um, and then relative to the Pursuit, not quite as fast, but more stable. So okay. on, on those metrics, that's kind of how it how it falls. Um, another big difference with the Frontier 12 is the Frontier 12 has two scuppers. So it's primarily, you know, more of a, of a dry deck boat that will drain than it is a boat you're going to go, you know, plowing through some bigger rivers or just crashing through the surf. So with the Unlimited, you can do that, you know, all day long and that thing's going to drain like a champ. So if you're someone who fishes, uh, you know, and paddles, gets through the bigger water, you know, you're getting more water in your deck and you want it to get off your deck as fast as possible, the Unlimited is definitely going to be the way to go. Very cool. And I'm, I'm curious. I saw Craig in the chat earlier. Craig, if you could, if you're still watching, buddy, let us know how fast you're going with that bow mount trolling motor on that Unlimited. If you could drop that down in the chat, because I'm sure that'll be the next question to uh pop up um because you know guys are always you know especially the the tournament fishing guys they're always worried about getting to their spots super fast and uh i'm sure that's going to be a hot question and you kind of touched on the ease of the paddling compared to the f12 it's going to paddle a little easier than the f12 um maybe not exactly the same as the pursuit but you know you're getting more stability than the pursuit so to speak correct and the tracking's excellent we've heard from the guys who are out there on that uh, unlimited that the tracking, you know, really is doing what we, what we wanted it to do, or it really holds a good line and it glides well after you stop paddling or kind of turn down the motor. For you motor guys, uh, my man, Joel Scarborough in the chat says he thought he heard 4.7 ish miles per hour, which on a kayak, that's, that's cruising, man. That's cruising. Yeah. We're so. going to get some good speed numbers. In the coming weeks, we've got a couple weekends planned for photo, video, and kind of on water testing, and we'll uh, we'll certainly document what it what it does with a motor guide, with a Honda 2.3, with a pivot drive, with a torpedo, and with a paddle. Nice, nice, very cool. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, take that for a test paddle, man. I know uh, my dealer's got a demo coming in, and and that's one thing we talked about this weekend is you know getting that thing on the water when it finally thaws out up here <laughs> but uh you know just just putting it through the paces and giving it a paddle you know i love how the pursuit paddles and i'm super interested to see you know what the unlimited's like with that extra stability it's going to be i mean i'm excited for it i'm excited um accessories i know we've had a lot of questions about that why don't we start with the pod um okay and i'll i'll, I'll pull that up here uh you know, a lot of guys are asking price point. Um, will it fit in all the boats and things like that? Uh, price point on the gear pod is one ninety nine. It, um, you know, I, it, it, we got our first gear pod out of the mold about one thirty on Friday. I had to hit the road at three to catch my flight, so it was really it was basically grabbing the second gear pod that came out getting it assembled running up the stairs doing that video running down the stairs and running out the door <laughs> to the airport but we'll be able to get some more detailed photos and content on that gear pod this week um but it is uh yeah it's it's 199 it, it's designed to kind of custom fit in the um flint and the unlimited so both of those have the out open bow without the gear pod. So that's what it's really designed for. Um, you know, it's not saying you couldn't mount it to a different model, but it's not really designed to fit in there. We'll certainly do some uh, kind of, you know, just fit testing and see how it fits in different spaces for people who have a have a 
Flint Orn Limited and also one of the other models, models might want to take it back and forth. But, um, you know, primarily it was designed for the, uh, the Unlimited and the Flint. Yeah. And we did have an interesting question. Someone dropped in <laughs> to ask if you could float it. Like, would it just float behind you? So our designer oh, yeah. uh, did a little uh, water line testing and said that's got a 35 pound capacity up to kind of with those, uh, you know, those little, little wings that are coming out that rest on the deck. So, yeah, if you want to put some gear in it and have it uh, float along behind you, it sounds like that'll work. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right. I like it. People getting creative. I like it. Uh, I just wanted to address a comment here real quick. Uh, Christopher Santoro asked, question for the big guys. Will this or the F-12 be more stable option for someone who's pushing 300 pounds? I mean, I think you could go either or. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a big guy. I'm I'm pushing 250. I'm being generous, and uh, you know, I, I've floated in a flint before, my friend. What I'd recommend doing is go to your local dealer, set up a demo, and uh, get out there and try them all. Get out there and try them, try them all. Yeah, definitely. And you know, a lot of times it's you know, which is more stable isn't really the right question. It's more does it have enough stability for me. Sure. Because sometimes you say, hey, you know, the Frontier 12 may feel more stable, but I feel just as confident in the Unlimited, and I'd take that for the extra speed or something else it has to offer. So they're, they're pretty darn close, and it's definitely going to be a matter of, you know, trying to, like you said, get it on the water, see what feels right to you, and go from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, continuing with the accessories, I know the hunters are drooling, drooling, layout seat and a duck blind yes yeah, so the layout seat can be achieved with uh with the the stock seat base and seat flip the base upside down and then there's a seat height kit that provides just a little bit of height to the seat so it clears the track and the deck but with that you can drop that seat where you're really sitting at about track level and get get down low the duck blind is in uh, is in prototyping right now and we'll have one of those in a couple of weeks to fit test on an unlimited, get that dialed in. And those will be available, you know, by, uh, you know, early summer for the unlimited early midsummer, definitely in time for hunting season this, uh, you know, this fall. It's going to be here for, for hunting season. Sorry. we got Jay over here in the corner. <laughs> Zero's and, up, uh, huh? he, he, he's, he's waiting for the, uh, the, uh, the hunting stuff for duck season this year. I know yeah, a bunch of guys are stuff coming along those lines too. So um, very cool. It's going to be a fun year for hunting. No doubt about that. Nice. I always like fun years of hunting, man. You can't go <laughs> wrong. Um, a lot of folks asking when will the uh, retract device for the transducers be available? That's probably, you know, summer, mid, late summer. We didn't, uh, you know, our first priority was getting the unlimited out, getting the core accessories like the outboard motor bracket, bow motor mounts, you know, the pivot and EPS uh, transom brackets, all that stuff. We we had prototypes for all that, you know, when it launched. But, you know, until you put it on and really fit test it, then, uh, you know, you, you just don't know. So we, we've done that. We've made our adjustments. We're moving forward on that stuff. A um, couple other little things to work through. And then we'll be uh, moving full speed ahead on that uh, on that transducer retract kit. I was talking to our designer James today, and his you know his mind's going wild with all the he's got it figured out in his head. It's just a matter of translating that into CAD, getting parts printed, <laughs> tested, getting tooling made, and away you go. I like it. I like it. Um, motor mounts. Uh, I saw a lot of questions about. Um, the torpedo mount, the bow mount, and then also, will there be a mount for a power pole as well? Uh, okay, let's address the bow mount first. Yes, that is that is coming. Um, okay. The the bow on the unlimited is pretty flat relative to like the Frontier Twelve. The Frontier Twelve really kind of rises up at the bow. Sure. And unlimited is really, um, you know, it's more like the Flint. It really struck me in seeing the two side by side of how different that made them kind of appear and just feel. Um, so that bow mount is pretty flat plate. And the one in the video was actually just a modified Frontier 12 mount um, with some spacers, thanks to FedEx shipping delays and whatnot. Um, but that, that'll be available in March. The outboard motor bracket will be available in March. The uh, 
what's now called the quick connect transom bracket. And that's what goes on the transom and for mounting either the pivot drive, the Torquedo or the new canoe EPS. Those will all be available in March as well. Okay. And that system, which we'll have uh, our shipment with all of our motor stuff finally arrived um, today. So we'll be able to show that stuff off on the unlimited later this week. The pivot, um, the, a pivot drive, a motor guide XI3, which you've already seen on the water and, um, uh, and the torpedo. And then with that new quick connect set setup, it's really slick how it all works. And it's really simple to interchange between pivot drive, torpedo EPS. If you want to run multiple systems there. Very cool. Um, then the last one was the power pole. So Correct. you can definitely use the power pole with the uh, the power pole transom kind of mount bracket onto the outboard motor bracket or the the um, the transom motor plate. So you can there, there's nothing stopping you from mounting that right now. But yes, we will look at more specific um, power pole um, mounts um, in the near future. And that was one of the main reasons for having that uh, that 10 inch top load gear track in the back right by the stern is it gives us so much flexibility in creating custom mounts and even for users to create their own mounts with having that track there um you know you can just go wild kind of creating your own setups and give us the uh the ability to easily you know create some custom uh, power pull mounts and different things especially if you're running you know, a pivot drive and you want a power pole, that sort of thing. You'll order run two power poles. That will really help out. Okay. Right on. Um, so you kind of touched on the pivot drive. Um, some guys were asking, will the Frontier 12 pivot drive work on the Unlimited as well? Yes, it will. The only thing that would be needed, or I should say recommended, it may not actually be absolutely required, <laughs> would be that uh, that quick connect transom bracket. Okay. So if you, if you swap that, you know, you get one of those for your Frontier 12, or excuse me, for the Unlimited, then you can swap everything else. Now, if you want to be able to go back and forth real quick, you could get a sep you know, a second steering kit and a second retract cord, and then basically you'd be, you know, taking the pedal tower out of the track, just pulling the pin, lifting the pivot drive or the prop shaft off the transom, relocating that with your drive cable to your other model so if you had the both of those things set up the quick connect bracket the uh the steering um handle and steering cable and the retract cord you could swap back and forth in a matter of minutes very cool and that that kind of leads into the next thing i had written down here was what were the improvements made to the transom itself because you guys kind of switched that up a little bit um, and I, I forget, I saw that on the unveiling video. Some guys were asking, you know, what, what improvements were made to the transom? Um, so the transom on the current models is, is essentially flat on the inside and outside. So okay. you got the transom hole that goes through the middle that provides some kind of structural strength. But really, otherwise, it's just, you know, relying on the material thickness and whatnot to, to provide the strength. And, you know, it, it works well. But what we did on the Unlimited was we built in some, some more feature there. So on the inside of the transom, there's a couple, they almost look like drain channels, if you will, like little kind of half circle cutouts um, that go into the transom and down. Um, and just having that extra, that, that shape, those radiuses, it really just adds a lot of um, structural strength. So you're not just relying on the material, you know, the wall thickness and such to provide uh, that and it also really locks it in because you don't have the ability for it to kind of you know if you squeeze it it's not going to move because it's got the, those rigid features in there then the, essentially the same thing on the outside just in a different way with uh, kind of the notches as you go down um on the on the outside of the transom that uh that really locked that in so Really, what we're trying to do is build a lot of uh, just kind of structural design strength into it, lock that transom in so the plastic doesn't have the ability to squeeze, to move, to do anything, but just kind of, you know, stay in place and stay strong when it's under the stress of a motor. Nice. Nice. I like it. I like it. And that'll uh -huh. also, um, also help with the transport card. I know that was a couple of comments that I saw. Um, yeah, you know, some I, people when they use the transport card on another model, they see a little bit of flex, 
in that transom with uh, with those ridges in there with that feature, it, it'll make it really uh, really secure and sturdy with that transport cart. So in relation to that transport cart, I also saw a comment: Will the gear tracks um, on the rear gunnel support um, a boondocks landing gear setup? <laughs> I saw that one too and didn't answer it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we we got to test that out a little bit better. There's okay. uh, you know, there, there's, there's two molded in inserts on each of those tracks and you know, it's probably something that should work, but can I say, yes, it'll work and support it every time in every circumstance that, you know, haven't got that not, uh, don't have that degree of confidence quite yet, but I, I know that it gives uh, a huge leg up in mounting one of those. And I think a great solution could be, Kind of relying on the track and then maybe a little bit of an additional bracket that went in you know kind of horizontally into the into the you know the gunnels and provided some some strength on shear as well so we'll look at that i know it's a popular question and something a lot of people would want to be able to do and we'll okay. uh, we'll play around with it and uh try to provide some some more specific feedback on that right on um same seat base as the F12, and can you go tandem in the Unlimited? Uh, yes, exact same seat. So if you have an F12, you want to add an Unlimited to your fleet, you know, you can grab the seat from one and drop it in the other to have a tandem setup. Um, and yes, you can definitely go tandem Unlimited. Um, there's a couple pictures, I don't think we've got them up yet, um, that I was looking at today from our guys this weekend, kind of a tandem, tandem hunting setup. And it, it really works nice. The The deck track on the Unlimited is 79 inches long. For reference, the Frontier 12 is 70. And then okay. the Unlimited doesn't have the gear vault right in front of those tracks to, you know, kind of say, okay, well, can't put your feet here. So in oh, the Unlimited, right, right. you really have a lot of space for that tandem set. If you got nine inches more space on the deck track, the main deck floor area, but then you also have that open bow where if the forward passenger is sitting further forward, their feet can be up there comfortably and not, you know, pushed up against anything. Right on, right on. So you get a little bit more leg room in there if you're going tandem, Definitely. which is super nice. Um, there was a question at the beginning. Uh, it was, um, can you use the casting bar with the gear pod? And I think they were worried about, uh, where the forward bar mounts in the tracks. Uh, yes, you definitely can. The, the gear pod mounts up in the bow tracks, which are the 10-inch the tracks that are a little bit narrower on center. The, the casting bar will mount in the main deck tracks. So you can definitely, yeah. So the, the, the gear pod is going to go back Way as far here. as those 10-inch tracks, kind of right in the middle of that arrowhead there on the deck floor. Um, yep. And then your casting bar will mount you know, from there back. And, you know, the same thing applies to the pivot drive. The pivot drive base will mount in the main deck track. So you can definitely rerun in a pivot drive and have a gear pod um, at the same time. Very nice. Very nice. Um, will the top mount tracks be available to be fitted on other new canoe uh, models? Uh, yeah, that's been, that's been a real popular question, and I understand why. Um, the answer is yes. It's just a matter of when. With um, with the uh, the launch of the Unlimited, with pretty much all of our aluminum track that we have on order and, and have coming through is going to need to go to it to keep those rolling. So as soon as we can get orders in, get built up on material, get that work through the system, then we will make that available to – there you go. There's a nice tandem shot. Um, we'll make that I'm getting text messages orders. from Everett. <laughs> nice. He's always, uh, always on the spot. Um, so it's probably, you know, I'm, I'm probably kind of speculate maybe, maybe May, May, June timeframe that we can okay. have, um, those tracks available, but it'll definitely be something that we make available for all, all new canoe models, um, for upgrades. I like it. I like it. And that photo is uh, what Blake was referencing earlier. Two hunters were out in the tandem setup, paddling away. So definitely can do the tandem. Um, are there plans for a rudder? I've seen this question quite a bit as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's something okay. we've been been working on um, through some of our guys on the team. And 
with it's going to get more into the uh you know off the back burner and uh you know front and center um on something we're working on along with that transducer retract uh, uh system so i fully expect to be able to have a rudder option available um you know sometime in the coming three to six months and okay. the goal is to have it work on that same uh quick connect transom bracket so essentially if you want to you know, use your pivot drive, use your pivot drive. If you want to take the pivot drive off and paddle upon a bow mount motor, that same transom bracket, just connect in, you know, pull off the pivot drive, drop in, you know, the, essentially the rudder, same bracket, same steering handle, same retract, everything just kind of plug and play. So it'll be a really slick system once we uh, just get it all fine tuned and get it out there. But, you know, just if you envision that, you can see that we got about 75% of it. It's just that actual rudder blade portion and how that mounts. It's, <laughs> it's That's still sitting the rest there. <laughs> um, will the boat come with scupper plugs for all the holes? No, it will not come with it. Um, you know, seven plugs is a lot to kind of tag along with the kayak. So, but we'll have kits available for those, um, you know, at a, very reasonable price for people who want to be able to, you know, plug those scuppers and keep the deck dry. Gotcha. Can you use the gear pod with the pivot drive? What's up, Anthony? Um, yes, you definitely can. No problem at all. Uh, will the rear handle still work with the pivot drive installed? Um, yes, it will. All right. The only thing it really didn't work with, um, was like a, a power pole or a bracket that kind of comes off the transom and then comes in, it covers up that handle area. But the pivot drive and the other systems go, um, you know, more on the bracket and back, so so they'll work. And that handle is one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is so nice to, to carry that to limit it around. Um, got a tip of the hat to James on that one. We uh, he came up with that bent tube idea, and we kind of went back and forth and figured out how we're going to mount it in there and keep it secure. But it's a pretty sweet system because it's got the two receivers on either side, and both of those receivers have the recess to kind of fit flush, and they sit below that 10-inch track. So the two receivers both have a quarter 20 insert, then the track sits above it, and they have 832 inserts. So it's really kind of just reinforces, you know, that. Uh, the, how secure that handle is that you've got basically two layers of, uh, of mounting on top of it, but it, it works just so nice. And especially if you're, you know, it, you were going around corners and stuff in the shop all the time and putting the boat on its side and stuff. And it works great for that. It's got that angle in it that kind of levels when you're on its side and really easy to rotate upside down. And then when you don't need it, it's just, it's just out of the way. Right on. Does the gear pod interfere with the bow mount trolling motor? No, it doesn't. It was uh, it was designed to sit right below the motor if the motor's retracted. So the, the pictures may be a little deceiving, but you got to remember that there's the the bow mount motor plate, and then there's the quick release bracket, and then the actual motor. So that motor sits up. You know, the actual motor that's retracting sits up a good three four inches off of the mounting. You know, off of that bow. But it will clear the uh, it'll clear the gear pod on both the Flint and the Unlimited. Very cool. Uh, Jacob Baldwin asks, "What's the weight capacity?" It is six hundred pounds, my friend. That's Crit. with the uh, yeah, that's with the scuppers plugged. Okay. So, yeah, you're about three fifty, four hundred, you know, for self bailing, and then to get uh, um, plug those scuppers and and get up there. And we're, we're going to do some more thorough testing on that. That's one of the things you just kind of estimate, you know, based on prototypes and, and CAD models. But, you know, we'll get some boats out there. We'll load them up. We'll really see what a comfortable weight limit is. But we're confident that those numbers will be will be minimums, anything, and we'll be able to raise it. But we'll start there and, uh, and, and, <laughs> and adjust as needed. Nice. When will the complete decking kit be available? <clears throat> Uh, those should be available in March as well. We did, we do have complete decking kits that we had um, for fit testing. We're going to add a few more pieces to them. Um, the initial kits were pretty much just on the deck floor area. Going to add a few more pieces up on the the side gunnels, kind of adjacent to the um, wiring access plates and such. 
Um, and then those should be ready to ship mid March. So pretty much by the time people are receiving unlimited, we'll have those, um, ready to go and get out the door. Very cool. Very cool. I know I saw a comment in here, American made. Yes. 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 All new news are American made right in, uh, the land of cheese, AKA <laughs> Wisconsin. I live like 10 minutes from the border, so I can say that I can get away with that folks. But uh, uh, cost on decking kits, do you know that off the top of your head? Well, the, the basic kit's included, so that's part of the unlimited. And then the completion kit um, off the top of my head, I think, is 100 for the uh, okay. for, for the rest of it. Complete deck. Yes. Very cool. Um, does anybody else have any questions? If so, drop them in the comments. Uh, we've, we've hit quite a few here. And just check my notes. Try to get everybody's questions answered. So if I left you out, I'm sorry. Um, somebody's asking when Romel will get one and work his magic. <laughs> I know a lot of folks are are interested to see what Romel's going to do with that thing. Uh, Romel, aka the Rigging Wizard, he is. <laughs> he'll have one in a, in a few weeks. So we've got a, a West Coast shipment that's getting out right at the start, and he's got one on there, and we'll let him. Uh, <laughs> Go in his lab and work up some magic and see what he comes back with. He just commented. He said, will Romel go broke while building his unlimited? Answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start, uh, yeah, we'll start a Kickstarter for him if we need to, whatever it takes. Um, somebody's asking, is it wiring ports or is it actually wired? And it's just wiring ports, correct? Yeah, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. So it's got that that plate that's on the that you see, and that's three eighths of an inch thick, and it has a gasket behind it, and it's uh, secured with four four uh, threaded inserts. And then behind that is a is a recessed area that's not cut out at the factory. So if you're not using those plates, you're only using one of them, you never have to worry about leaking or water getting through and getting in. But if you are using them, you can choose, do I just drill out, you know, a hole that's the diameter of my wire, diameter of my plug, or do I want to cut out that whole oval shape and be able to reach inside and really get maximum access? Um, and then once you do what you do, you wire it into the plate, you know, secure it back with that gasket. And, you know, it just, it looks really clean. It's very um, watertight. And another cool thing is, if you want to try something different, you can just get another wiring access cover plate and try again or switch it up. Or, you know, we're at Westbrook Supply on Friday night and Fletch is talking about kind of having different ones that you could swap out even, you know, depending on what you were doing. So just gives you tons of flexibility and, uh, and really forgiveness if you want to try something different. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It gives you the options to be uh, versatile, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave Palmer asks, is the seat cup holder something in development? I don't know what he means by that, but there is cup holders molded into the boat right next to the seat or where yeah, the seat they're up. kind of right behind your hip, you know, if you're in a solo setup. And they're nice size uh cup holders. They'll hold, you know, the big clean canteen Nalgene style water bottles. Um, in addition to anything smaller, they're really deep. So it's a real secure um, space that's going to hold whatever you want to bring for, uh, for beverages. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. will the tandem setup work, uh, with the pivot drive? Uh, that's a good question. And we have a lot of, uh, fun testing ahead of us on that, on the unlimited with the pivot drive. Um, one thing that we know you can do, and we haven't again, Put it on the water um, is using the, the shorter f10 cable to put the pit the pedals further towards that kind of in a rear seating position and then have space for um, a second passenger in front of the pedals so essentially you got your forward passenger then you have your pedals then you have your rear passenger so that's one potential setup um, the the bow arrangement with the the center floor track and the two um, you know accessory tracks up on that little deck that's very similar to the flint and the pursuit. So it's possible to use a, a flint style base and have the pedals, you know, further forward up in the bow and then have a passenger behind. 
So the answer is, uh, is, is yes, there, there's setups that will work. Uh, we just need to get out there and really kind of dial in what works best and what modifications, you know, we need to make to allow a, a full, you know, fully functional tandem um, pivot drive set up on the Unlimited and probably the Frontier 12 as well. Nice. <clears throat> what is the price without the 360 seat? Um, right now, we don't have it priced without the 360 seat, but the 360 seat by itself is 250 Um so, so if you talk to your dealer and said, hey, I don't need the seat, <clears throat> kind of work something out with them, you'd probably be in that 1349 Yeah, 1349 range. Right on. Um, the tackle storage slot, what size box uh, fits in there? Oh, man, my numbers. Um, I think it's the, the 3600. 3600. Kind of the, the medium size one. Yep. Um, the, it's it's a pretty good size space. It's one of those, you know, one of the things I've seen in real life for the first time. I was like, wow, that's, you know, there's some good space in there. So um, I believe that's the one it was. Don't 100% quote me on it, but that. I'm I'm pretty sure that that's the one it was designed for the uh, the red one. I think the 3700 gets gets to be a little bit bigger, um, but it's uh, definitely some nice space in there. Right on. Is there any flexing in the floor? Uh, yeah, it's something we should have brought up earlier. You know, and you know, going back to the very start um, of the unlimited design and really back into the you know the pursuit and the flint and the F10. Um, you know, no. With something we've really, you know, learned a lot along the way, and no, that that floor is is really solid. It's got that not those nice deep channels which serve um, are excellent for drainage, but then really provide that structural strength too. And there's some good curvature kind of from side to side where it's still comfortable to stand. But again, anytime you can avoid a lot of flat surfaces with roto molding, it gives it a lot more strength. And I'm confident that everybody that stands on this deck is just going to feel like. Yeah, this is good. This is good. It's not going <laughs> to flex. It's going to drain. It's going to do exactly what I want it to do. Nice. Um, I don't know if you guys have tested this. Maybe uh, one of the team guys that have the boats, um, but will a black pack or uh, the low pro crate fit in the back? I know I can speak on behalf of the low pro crate. Um, if it doesn't fit, Yak Gadget sells risers to kind of raise it up uh, above those sides, and it typically fills in. Uh, I don't know if Craig or one of the guys has a black pack that they've thrown in there. The either, black pack so. definitely fits. Um, okay. It's the same kind of spacing as the uh, as the flint in the Pursuit back there. So I, I can't tell you the low pro crate you know, off the top of my head, but I know the black pack fits. Um, we'll have one in there later this week that we can show or maybe uh, – Everett or one of the guys that gets uh, some of the boats this week will be able to show that. But th that'll fit no problem. It's got the tracks on either side. So our black plaque straps will work. We just kind of secure the straps into the track and then have the buckles to release the uh, um, to release the black pack. And yeah, Craig just chimed in and said it fits yeah. no problem. Um, one other question I saw was, uh, will you guys be at ICAST this year and will the Unlimited be there? <laughs> If we're there, the unlimited will be there. No doubt about that. We're not. Uh, we're not a hundred percent committed yet, but we're 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 expecting to be there. Very it's been, cool. Uh, you know, with all the trade show turbulence of the last nine months, um, plus the uh, you know just the focus on getting the unlimited out. A lot of the um, you know real decision on whether to go to trade show or not is the amount of upfront time and effort you have getting ready for it. And sure. we didn't want that to take away from from the launch of the unlimited from execution. So we're uh, now that we're where we're at, we can start looking at that. But uh, we definitely like to be there. I know a lot of our team guys would like to be there, and uh, hopefully we can make that happen. Very cool. Um, I saw one other question in there uh, that I wanted to address. Somebody asked, "Is the pursuit or the unlimited the ultimate?" bass tournament fishing boat and i think that's uh that's up to you i mean what i like what blake likes and the next guy likes could be three completely different things um i would go try them out reach out to a new canoe team member that's got those boats try them out see how you like them and then uh you know you make the decision 
Yeah, I, um, I would just say yes, Brian. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either Both. one, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong, really, for either of those boats. No, you can't. Um, it really, it's just going to come down. It, you know, it's really all about trade-offs, you know, what you value more than something else or what you know, what the right balance of things is to you. And, and both of those boats are just going to be exceptional. You know, we know the pursuit's an exceptional tournament fishing platform. You know, just look at, um, you know, the results that, that our team guys in the pursuit had over the last year. Now, I know that's 99% them and 1% the pursuit, but, hey, sure. if you're choosing the pursuit, then <laughs> yeah. that must mean something. Um, and the Unlimited should be right there in there. I know Craig and some of the guys that have been on the pursuit um just really have enjoyed it um yeah excuse me they found the unlimited i'm sorry so yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll both be great and really just kind of comes down to you know what personal preference you know, man personal preference style fit feel you know is going to be best for you will the existing transport cart work with the unlimited yes it will all right all right see man you guys are getting all the answers tonight. <laughs> um, can the seat be lowered? Yes, it can. Same same setup with uh, that's invert, inverting the base and then dropping in the the seat height kit to raise the seat up so it doesn't interfere with the track. And then um, yeah, so in five minutes you can you can have it uh, dropped about four inches. Right on. Well, I think that's it, my friend. We uh, we ran through quite a bit. We're a little over an hour. Um, time flies when you're having fun. I know. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> uh, any final thoughts, words, anything you want to throw out there to the good folks uh, tuning in tonight? Oh, well, thanks for tuning in. Um, man, as you all get to Unlimited, choose to do. i just really pumped to see how you set it up, how you outfit it. So, yeah. Um, share that stuff pod drop it in on the new canoe owners club put it up on uh, facebook tag new canoe but we'd really love to build kind of a just a collection of um you know how, how users of owners have set up their unlimiteds once we get them out there um also probably uh wednesday evening possibly thursday afternoon we'll be going live with another video to really walk through the pivot drive the uh the torpedo and the the xi3 setups on the um on the unlimited plus you know a more uh detailed look at the gear pod that isn't uh so rushed as our video from last friday so lots of uh, good stuff coming up there and then you know pretty much daily over the next three or four weeks we're going to have content that we're going to be sharing that our team and pro staff is is generating you know out there on the water just putting these things through the paces trying them out, you know, going through different environments. And we're really going to try to push the limits um, over the next few weeks to really show how well that deck drains, how it can handle rough water, you know, how you can outfit it and accessorize it and just really uh, just how unlimited it is. So watch out for that. If you have questions kind of, hey, I'd like to see it in use here, see it there. I mean, that stuff is coming. We're going to get it out. Um, keep the questions coming because we love to answer them. We had one other question that we didn't touch on, uh, warranty. Yeah, three-year warranty for the, uh, for the Unlimited. Um, as with all new canoe kayaks, comes with free parts for life. So if something breaks or falls off, we'll replace it, no charge. And if you ever have a problem, you just jump on our support page, newcanoe.com slash support, fill out the form, and we'll, uh, we'll take care of you. There you go, folks. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm here every other Monday. We're talking to the team guys. We're talking to Blake. We're getting updates on products, talking to talking to kayak fishing guys, kayak hunters, how they rig up their boats and all those different things. And if you missed this or just caught a glimpse of it, um, we also upload this to all major podcast platforms. So please go check us out over there. Um, you can listen to it whenever. You don't have to look at this. I know I'm not very attractive, but, you know, I, just, I do what I can. <laughs> but, uh, Blake, thanks again uh, for taking the time out tonight to uh, answer all the good folks' questions. And um, thanks for everything you do. I've seen a ton of comments pop in here. Thank you, Blake. Um, thank you, New Canoe. I mean, uh, what you and the, the rest of the squad does is completely awesome. And uh, we really appreciate uh, what, you, what you guys do. And, uh Looking forward to the next one coming out, man.
Thank you, man. We appreciate you. You probably probably don't know this, but it was uh, you know, about an hour to our live video and we were kind of scrambling and we hit up Brian and said, Hey, can you help us out? <laughs> and man, he pulled it off without a hitch. Brian yeah. uh, working, you know, coaching our you know, our Brian that was on site and putting everything together and just man, it's great to see the teamwork that we have here and just uh the dedication, you know, throughout our staff and guys like Will Reed who are putting in just long days grinding, you know, running the drone and running the pontoon and getting back home and editing video to get it up and just yeah. really grateful and thankful for all the people that uh, contribute so much. Our design, you know, Skunk Works group that put in a lot of hours just kind of really going back and forth and uh, trying to make this uh, this kayak as good as possible. Super cool, man. And I, I told Brian Connolly I was sending him an invoice for helping him through that stream. So we're good. We're good. <laughs> no Thanks, problem. everybody. I, I told Kyla to pay it straight away, so no worries. <laughs> we're all good. We're all good. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Get out there. Get unlimited. We'll see you guys out on the water.